Uh, so I think the frequencies are up a little bit because last night my husband was complaining that his back was hurting, but I didn't feel anything. So I'm like, okay, great. And then this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, as, as I was going to the restroom and blowing my nose and all that stuff, um, right after that, my back started hurting. <laughs> and so, uh, yes, as my body goes through reparations at night and I had a glass of milk last night, um, then it will feel whatever the frequencies are working out in areas of my body that are still going through that metamorphosis. And so I remember back in my 20s and 30s, there was a little knot underneath my shoulder blades that I was always trying to get massage therapists to work out because it's a lot of stress, whether it's bending over and writing or doing so much studying or just my posture at the time. And so it really affected underneath my shoulder blades and there's always these little knots underneath them. So this makes sense why I have a uh, little bit of pains underneath my shoulder blades. So yesterday I was uh, trying to figure out, actually last night, I was trying to figure out like, how am I gonna write my background? Cause I have right now nine pages of my background, but it really is just way off. It really did not get to the root of what my background is. And like you already know kind of like the teenage background and all that shit that I disclosed the last couple of days. And that's just one aspect of it. But there is a whole other world that I didn't even think of. And so when I was trying to get ideas and I'm Googling background, how do you write a background? And it's just really a general thing. And then suggestions on how to develop a background in your resume, which then reminded me of how many times I wrote my resume, wrote my husband's resume. I love resume writing. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Cause you have to give a background of just kind of who you are. It doesn't mean you have to put out like all the different degrees you don't have, but your history, who you're raised by, the times, um, just there's so much like, the, 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 yeah, the economic times, the social climate, everything is influencing your background. So you have to remember where you came from, what your parents had to deal with, because anything that you were told, were told by your parents who came from a specific time, of course, right? I mean, my parents came from, they were a silent generation, and, then, and that's who influenced me. Like remember, well not remember, if, I don't know if you read that, that in be, the behavioral scientists discovered that nurture actually has more influence than nature. So if you're influenced by someone, even if it's just nurture, not natural, you're influenced by the social situations of that time, the child rearing practices, the politics, religion, and science at the time, really just to make a long story short. And so then I'm looking at what my parents were dealing with at the time when they had, when they adopted me. And even before that, what did they have to deal with back in the 1950s, 1940s, okay? And then what did my grandparents have to deal with? And so in the whole turn of the century of 1900, it was all about war, 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 World War One, World War Two, <laughs> And then after that, then you have like the Vietnam War, Korean War, or Korean War, Vietnam War, Cuba. We had wars all over the place. And then that really paints a picture about the war out there. And now why, that's the old world, the old world order is the war out there. And so now they're saying, okay, no more war out there. Now we're going to turn the war inside. But when you turn the war inside and you're using antibiotics to build up defenses and then program them and then program society, then people become violent because their bodies rebelling against the programming. Not everybody has to be MK ultra and have to go through all those crazy experiments. Like what I had to endure, my sister had to endure, but you as a population have had that mentality instilled in you with corporal punishment, antibiotics, surgeries. I mean, you know all the different uh, stories about the indigenous population undergoing so much abuse from the missionaries and the, the different elders and all these different cults out there. Even though they come off as love and peace and, 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 and conservation, there's an element of lust, sex, violence, death, you know, and reproduction. Okay. And so 
<laughs> then you're seeing a big picture that the split of the humans now, what they're dealing with, these alter egos, is love and then violence. Love, like, let's make love and have fun and, and be peaceful. But then also on the other side of it, there's violence. And that's a really crazy split in humans today. Because, yes, it's part of it's the medical holistic system. The other part of it's it's the social and economic times of the day. And then all the history that has been instilled in us. And of course, the mainstream media are always infusing triggers for people to go and react to and instill the psychological operations of fear. And fear turns into violence. Okay? That's just the nature of fear. And that's what I learned as a kid is that anytime you instill fear into somebody or something, violence will ensue at some point. And then people hate each other. And they turn their weapons of mass destruction on each other and it's whether it's they they undermine each other or you know all the aggressive or passive aggressive ways of relating and families turn on each other and turn on other people it's just it it it's become the war inside doesn't stay in the war inside i think finally academia realized that the Rosic rosicrucians realized that I don't know if it was a mistake on their end or if they thought that if they turned the war inside, people would just self-destruct and they wouldn't act out. Well, no. When you turn the war inside, people act out what's inside. And you're seeing it right now. When people are breaking down, they're not nice. When they're breaking down, they're not peaceful. They're not nice. And then they're trying to grab on to all the life force and become strategic about it. And then the manipulation. Okay? And so... <laughs> And so that's why now the frequencies are raised, obviously, because my husband and I are feeling the same kind of pains. His is the lower back, mine's the upper back, and I'm, I don't have any other symptoms aside from that. And so, yeah, the frequencies are bringing up a lot of stuff. And of course, the virus is still out there, but I don't have any kind of symptoms as blowing my nose and whatever. And so, and so yeah, so, so harp and CERN and all that, the environment, the climate, all of that is affecting people's predisposed issues. And their antibodies, their defense systems are at the surface. Okay. And so, and so anyway, so I was looking up like the Rosicrucians of the 1970s. And there's an archive chest of the Rosicrucians. Now, why am I looking up the Rosicrucians of, Rosicrucians of the 1970s? Because I had to figure out my what world I came into here in America I came from the Vietnam War which was basically the West at war with itself at war with anything out there and then we're the casualties we're the fallout okay so I had to look up okay if I'm gonna look up my background and talk about my background in my book without going into so many crazy details because that's for another book then I gotta think about what world what is I coming into and then I know in the back of my head the Rosicrucians run everything the Jewish mystics, the Christian Gnostics, and the Hermeticists. Okay, it's not just one religion, there's so many of them out there. And it's all society. Okay, all the different politics, religion, and science that has been infiltrated by the Rosicrucians. And they, the Rosicrucian archives, and you'll see as you go down my timeline, I snapshotted two PDF documents that showed the different books that were offered at the time in the 1970s, written by Rosicrucian members. And it's alchemy. It's about war. It's uh, well, not about war, but it's about education. Okay, we hear about Charlotte Iserbite and Alex Jones talking about the Russians infiltrating our our educational system. Well, okay, if the Rosicrucians have infiltrated Russia and Russia is just another wing of the Rosicrucians, I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole because that's a rabbit hole that could be made to distract people from what from the the, the, the the militants of the 1970s that the Rosicrucians probably developed because everything that we know about came from antiquity and we have people who studied esoteric knowledge that are putting this stuff together they're using stuff from antiquity and applying it to today and so then when you look at the 1970s, it wasn't just about love. There was also war. A lot of war. And there was a lot of terrorism. Okay? There was 
serial killers back then. There was the Vietnam War, there was the anti-war, pro-war, there was the, the Weather Underground. I've heard about Obama being part of Weather Underground. I wouldn't doubt it, okay, because a lot, actually all the different beatniks and hippies, and there's so many different versions of hippies, okay, you're seeing them today, but they turned into yuppies, they turned into academics, they turned into corporate raiders, okay? And so the hippie generation went from love and war and 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 um, violence and terrorism, then they go into the academics, then they go into medicine, they go into psychology, they go into psychiatry, they go into all the different human biological sciences to try to program people, right? Program people and control their hormones, control the way <laughs> they think, the way they make love, the way they whatever. And then you're like, holy crap. And so that's then with all the antibiotics because antibiotics builds up defenses. Antibiotics is, is like terrorism inside the body. That's what we're dealing with is that that's what Imhotep realized. He knew how to take, they, they knew how to program people. How would, how would Shakespeare, how would Jung know about the different archetypes? Okay, the 12 different archetypes. Do I even have them written down? Oh yeah. Inspector, crafter, protector, artist. I mean, there's 12 different archetypes, but then there's personality types that even derive from the archetypes. But persuader, director, performer. Okay, so you have then biotech programming the humors, messing with your hormones and your genome. And so there's that. And then you have this, the behavioral psychologists and psychiatrists are going in and programming people and turn them into either a lover, a hater, or this or that, right? You see the split in our society, all the different people in their, in their programming. And, and then you see the rampant reproduction and then also the anger. And so no wonder Gen X and Gen Y, even though we're innovative, yes, but we're also angry and we're sick. We are so sick. You know how much sickness there is in the Gen X and the Gen Y? Why families are not talking to each other or always at war with each other or just finding a way to assimilate because they want to be part of their grandchildren's lives or just killing each other with kindness, killing each other with love and antibiotics and surgeries. <laughs> and so we're all, when you think about it, I am and we are a product of World War One and World War Two, And of course the Rosicrucians. I'm not saying they're bad or good. They just learned from someone who was 20 years old way back in antiquity. Now it's a new world order. Now they've allowed all the information to be out there and you figure out how to discern what's going to be appropriate and, and then be a voice. And there's voices all over Facebook and social media and YouTube. And of course there has to be a, um, a regulator to make sure that you're not completely causing so much upset of the homeostasis. And that's why I had to get vetted out by my own government to make sure I wasn't promoting antibiotics and that probiotics could actually live in the amount of salt that we promoted. And it could. And so then, so we have so many different voices out there and then who do you listen to? But, but when you think about it, it's all the same stuff repackaged. And so now, we, you know, when, when you think about it with the J world, we are <laughs> bringing up the war inside, but we're not adding to the war. We're bringing up and dealing with the war that was forced upon us for many years and even in our genetic line. And now we're feeding the war inside and arming ourselves to stay alive, which with food, with water, with all the nutrients. Okay, but you have to trace everything back to, I mean, you trace it back to Imhotep, yes, to the first physician who discovered surgery, war on the body, who discovered antibiotics, stopping the pain, but then building a defense system of which then gets out of hand. Okay, and then you look at just within the last hundred years, I mean, 1900 to 2000, that's a hundred years. Now we're in 2022. And now we're finally 
either dying from the last hundred years and all of the, the wars and the terrorism against us, and some of us are now finally surviving it. And we found a different way to deal with the war inside and the war out there. And so you need to study history to figure out how you're going to, <laughs> to, to understand what your parents went through, what your grandparents went through, and then what you're going through. And some people are a lost cause. They're, the war is ravaged them inside, the antibiotics, the surgeries, the cancers, all the diseases. The war that was now turned against them from academia, from the yuppies that were the beatniks, when the war turned against them inside, now, now it's anger and love. Anger and love. And you say anything else that, 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 that crosses that anger and love, they'll be even angrier and they will shut down. And that's exactly what goes on out there. Believe me, I've, I talk to walls all the time when you think about it. Because people will not get it. When, <laughs> when you've been using drugs, alcohol, and sex as a way to cope with the war since, since World War I, how do you break yourself out of that? I got lucky I didn't get in. I got, I mean, I smoked pot and I've only tried the illicit drugs maybe three times my whole life and I never did a psychedelic ever. I've always wanted to try the mushrooms, but it never went through. It would, the deal always went through whenever I thought that I would be able to do it. And the, some of the E stuff, well, it's psychedelic. Okay, I did, I have done E, so I've done a psychedelic. But never mushrooms or LSD, but I've done like an E type of situation and a little, and okay, a little bit, but not, not the mushrooms or the LSD or the ayahuasca. So I'll, I'll retract that. I have done versions of it in the 1990s, but never got caught up into it. It was never like a weekend thing. It was a once in a while, if that, not at all, like three or four times my whole life. Okay, so really it was pot that was the only thing that I ever got caught up into and then drinking tequila and other alcohols that there has been <laughs> stories of me just throwing up, projectile throwing up. And then no more, I, I, there's no more alcohol, no more drugs, not even smoking now. I smoked a lot. When my teens, I smoked Newports because I was hanging out with a bunch of people that were, you know, that were victims of the gangs, okay? And so they were smoking Newports. So I smoked a lot of Newports in my youth. And that's, and so I finally, just with, after this whole pneumonia and COVID, no desire for a cigarette, none, no desire. That's what's crazy, okay? When you purge out your childhood and all the things that had you cope with your childhood and all the other shit, let me tell you, it, it, it now you're just like, okay, you don't have that running you. You're not coping. I got to blow my nose. Jeez, I thought it was... Hold on. So just so you know, when I said on my Facebook a couple weeks ago, <laughs> when I was going through all that stuff, I haven't smoked a cigarette, have not even desired one. My husband will smoke, but that's no big deal. But no cigarette. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just, it is what it is. So anyways, so you really have to start studying, you know, when you think about it, what... God, I'm sorry, what your grandparents went through and then what your your great-grandparents went through and then what, what your grandparents went through and then what your parents went through and then what you're going through and then realize somebody is going to have to break the cycle of violence, break the cycle of war, break the cycle of destructive love. Is there constructive love? Yeah, I, I mean, we need to still have some reproduction, right? You got to have you got to lengthen your telomeres. Would you call that love? Eh, well, you're, there's conception inside your body. 
when you lengthen your telomeres, your body is replicating new, well, it's replacing the old and it's bringing in new information because that's what all these viruses are, new information. So when you're feeling the pain of replication, it's a type of love, but it's not something that you're going to be oozing and trying to get resources from somebody else and be manipulative no it, it's a it's just it's replication reproduction but it's a reproduction okay fine all right so we don't we yeah and so <laughs> and so you know now we just need to be run by something different not by love and war and all that and so anyway so <clears throat> i'm just it's just when you think about it, it's you can't just study one thing and come from just one tiny perspective. When you finally look at the big picture, you really have to look at history, okay? And now, with how we're doing things, we're going to have to break the cycle of love and the cycle of of violence and the cycle of war. And do we have to have babies right now? No, because so many people out there have not reconciled with their issues that they're burying children that are at extreme deficits that are going to be pigeonholed and won't have the opportunities because they're going to have mental issues health issues cognitive issues same thing they're going to have biological issues they're going to have learning disabilities but but every and they're going to have homicidal tendencies, suicidal tendencies. Okay? And so at, at some point, right now, yeah, with the frequencies that are up, reproduction is rampant. And so if they can accelerate the aging process in children who are born from people who have major deficits, and they accelerate the aging process in the older adults, and then those that in the JJ world, it's going to accelerate your, your, let's say healing. It's going to accelerate all the symptoms of evolution and you're going to have to keep on eating and feeling the pain. I don't even want to say the aging process. It's going to accelerate, it's going to accelerate, accelerate your maturing process in the JJ world because anyone outside the JJ world, they're not going to mature. They're just going to age. But they'll call it maturing because that's how we've characterized things. That's the new meanings that are applied. I don't say it's new meanings. I don't know if we've ever had a meaning of differentiate between maturing and aging. I've made that distinction. I don't think academia has made that distinction when you think about it. Um, because they die off. Less than 100 people die off. So they don't mature. They mature, I guess, if they mature up to a point. But you don't get maximum maturity. And is there a maximum maturity? No, that's called just constant evolution. But at least you're able to mature, and some mature faster than others, but they die, and then they decline. So when you think about it, is it really maturing, or is it aging? Do you mature for a certain amount of time in, in out there? Yeah, for a minute, some longer than others. Others have a very short lifespan of maturing, and then they start declining right away, and then they're not maturing, they're aging out. So, yeah. So those in the JJ world, the frequencies are going to increase your maturation process and it's going to be painful while everyone else is aging out. And I guess it has to happen, you know, and, and of course with so much of the medical holistic system and we have these kids that are being taken to the hospital, we have people going to the hospital all the time, going in for surgeries, going in for this. And when that happens on an aggressive, aggressive level, yeah, the body is breaking down. And children, absolutely, when children are born again from people with, with, with in deficit, every single time the mother and the father give them the antibiotics, give them the surgeries, give them whatever, it takes away their, it takes away their, their, potential and so and that's going to be for the next however many years and it seems evil yeah it seemed but what else are you going to do okay <sighs> God, my back was a little bit. 
And so study up on the greatest generation, the silent generation, the boomers, all right, the Gen Xers, Gen Ys. Gen X and Gen Y, yeah, we have a lot of health issues, we're angry. Some of us can handle being our own. The Gen Ys have an issue with being on their own. Gen Xers can be on their own for the most part on some level. And so that's why it's important to know what generation people are from so you understand what they're dealing with and the economy and the times. So the medical holistic system built up your defenses as well as trauma programs them. And so antibiotics is terrorism inside the body. Surgery is a form of terrorism inside the body. And the love, love, beatnik generation weaponized love and overdid it. Turned it into hate, death, destruction, and war, but the war inside. And that's where all the hospital system is. And the drugs, okay? And the drugs made it worse. And so during the decade of the 1970s, terrorists killed 184 people in the States and injured more than 600 others. In the decades and a half since 9-11, terrorists have been, have by contrast, killed 74. Between 1970 and 1979, nationalists and ethnic terrorists, religious zealots, and anti-war militants frequently attacked American targets. Okay, so when you're attacking yourself, that's, that's, when you have people wanting peace and they're attacking themselves, that's like someone saying, I, I, I'm in pain, there's evolution, and I'm going to go and attack myself with antibiotics. That's exactly what this is depicting. Between 1970 and 1979, nationalists and ethnic terrorists, religious zealots, and anti-war militants frequently attacked American targets. Terrorist attacks typically consist of bombings of civilian targets in New York, Los Angeles, and Washington that was also interspersed with shooting sprees aimed at the police. Well, we're seeing that shit again now. Wonder what, what the hell? But remember, we came... The 1970 people that were doing all this came from people who were in the Great War, okay? My mom is from the silent generation and born between the 1940s and whatever. She came from people who, who, who were out of World War II and World War I. And, and in the 1950s wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. 1950s, people were beating their children. Alcoholics, their PTSD was going on, okay, in the 1950s. And that's why it turned into the 1970s hippies that ran away from home. That's why I'm saying I, I now can feel so comfortable talking about my stuff because I know this is just a repeat of history. And so, and so, and so, yes, so each generation is reacting from the war. Whatever war it was. I mean, we didn't want to call it America, the, the Civil War and Vietnam War and, and the Great, the World War One and World War Two and... It's all, all, there's war, war, okay? So that's why people are, that's why there's people trying to find peace through war. It's not going to fucking happen, okay? When you're, when you're lobbing grenades at yourself with antibiotics, anti-life protocols, you're, you're causing a war inside your body. And then that war comes out because a monster becomes so huge. But that's, that's done by all the holistic and the allopathic part of the hippie hippie love generation and even before that so the weather underground an anti-war organization who uses war okay that targeted the pentagon the u.s capitol and banks claimed credit for 25 bombings in 1975 alone and i came here in 1975 but could have been responsible for upward of 45, according to the University of Maryland's Global Terrorism Database. And so all these different bombs that are, that are being used, all the weapons, the guns, and all, that's all antibiotics, anti-life. And now we're using antibiotics, anti-life protocols against our children, starting a war inside at an early age. We're, we're giving that to our grandparents. We're giving that to our parents. We're giving that to anyone <laughs> that is looking for peace? Are you looking for rest and peace? The Weather Underground, an anti-war organization that targeted the Pentagon, the U.S. Capitol. Okay. All right, never mind. I read that already. All right. So, and then you read about weather. I'm not going to read all of this, but the Weather Underground. But you're seeing now, how do, you, how, you, how do you get peace from war? You don't. You actually make the war worse. And so this is the whole JJ meta mentality. Now you got to deal with all of the war that's inside. Don't add anything more to it. Okay? Don't add any more 
wars to your body. You know, every single time you take a pill, powder, supplement, detox, NyQuil, that's called the war of Sudafed, the war of NyQuil, the war of surgery, the war of Cipro. All your prescription drugs you take every single day, the war of this pill that you're taking every single freaking day. It's like you're letting the enemy inside your body 24 fucking 7 when you're taking all your different antibiotics and your pills and all your surgeries. The war of the Cleveland Clinic, the war of Stanford University, when you're taking all their protocols. And so now you see the connection between the war and the bombs and the guns and the medicine, biotech, DARPA, psychological operations, behavioral scientists, and then all that, right, again, all those militants, all the weather underground went right into academia and figured out how to weaponize your society against you without having to do all that stuff out there. The war is inside here. And then people are acting out. They're homicidal. They're serial killers. They're suicidal. They have cancer disease and chronic illness. You're seeing the casualties of war everywhere. And that's what I'm saying. Look at the hospital system. Look at your friends and family. They are casualties of the war inside because of people who could not deal with, I don't know, that they were victims and children of people who were victims of war from the Rosicrucians. That happened way back in Imhotep days. Can you blame all the Rosicrucian society for Imhotep? No, that's all they knew. Not saying that I condone it, but we have to break that cycle of violence. I took the 40 hour, 80 hour course of cycle of violence in California because I was working on the phone line trying to help all the different domestic violence victims. Because, yeah, I was kind of like a, um, a domestic violence. I don't say it wasn't. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. It could have been worse. But yeah, I took a 40 hour, 80 hour course in that and worked the phone lines a few times. And geez, it's some crazy stuff. But the cycle of violence that happens in families and in people's bodies happens in rising and falling of civilizations. It happens every turn of the fucking century. It hasn't, we got to stop, we got to stop it. <laughs> we got to stop adding more war to our body because I can't stop what goes on out there. I have no control what goes on out there. I just have to trust my police force, my government to keep things relatively okay. And they don't want to just completely tear down the house. Okay. But they've made mistakes. Who's they? The Rosicrucians. They've brought so much suffering because of the wars out there and then turning the wars inside. Anytime you declare a war, I don't care if it's out there or the war inside, there's going to be casualties and there's going to be mass casualties. And so that's why I say we are in a war, but it's a war inside and the casualties are at the hospital system. The casualties are your friends and family. But it's always been this way. Okay. Because someone hits you for thousands and thousands of years, you think it was okay. Maybe someone needs to stop hitting you. Maybe someone needs to stop thrashing you because you didn't get in line. And so now it's time to stop adding to the war inside and start dealing with the casualties of the war inside. Because you can't go and fix that casualty out there. You can't go and convert somebody in politics, religion, and science. I'm going to tell you, politics, religion, and science is based upon war. All of it is. It's all based upon war. And so when you step outside of politics, religion, and science, then you get out of the war. And it's not even figurative. It's actual literal war in politics, religion, and the scientific dogmas. And that's why I felt like I had a right to ask you guys to consider, reconsider your politics, religion, and science. That even the words that are used in all the different texts and the grim wars and whatever, it is battle cries. Just look at your Facebook. Everyone's like, oh my God, revelations. Oh my God. And so this is really, holy shit. Okay, and, and, and I was just a baby when I came here in the 1970s. And then, of course, from a war-torn nation, I, I, I'm the best person to talk about this. 
when I when I see the hippies say, "Oh yeah, make love, not war." A war is what is it? War is unhealthy for children and other living things. And that was actually on the wall at my parents' house, in the bathroom. It was a yellow and black picture, and it was framed. And it said, "War is unhealthy for children, for all, for children and all living things." Something to that effect. Okay, and then there was another picture right in front of the toilet so we had to read it and it was about the san diego zoo and says please do not molest whatever all these words about harassing animals and it was like a string of words that you get from a thesaurus that says please just and it basically says please do not harass the animals in like a hundred words okay and so and so that's the hypocrisy. That's the, the gut feeling that you know something's not right. You say you're not about war and violence, domestic violence, but damn, you are really hitting me. Or damn, you put soap in my mouth. Or damn, you just isolated me. Or damn, you did that. I mean, and, and so that's why these kids don't understand. That they don't understand love. They're, or not even love. They don't understand respect. Because they were never respected as a child. As a child. They have no boundaries. These kids have no boundaries. I didn't have boundaries because my parents didn't have boundaries. People out there don't have boundaries with each other because their parents never had boundaries with them. They hit them. They did all these things, caused war inside, took them to the hospital, and they were doing all these experiments on them, giving them you know operations and, and pills. And so, and so when you're adding so much war to a child, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to turn into little evil things or they're going to be out of control. And then, then they grow up. And then now what do you do with this person? And then they're, then they're going to self-implode at some point, And hopefully they don't take everyone down with them. And don't you get tired of that? I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of experience. I'm tired of reliving it. <laughs> but I got to relive it. Because it's only going to it's only gonna help me understand myself and understand how I'm going to survive all this shit. And potentially give you guys some opportunity. I'm not saying you guys are going to get it or even get through it. Some of you will. I have... I have a lot of hope for a few of you. Others of you, I question if you'll even get through it, if it's even worth it to you to do it. And that's okay. You have the opportunity. And that's all you need is an opportunity and a choice. And then you'll figure it out. But, yeah, so my background, my background is in the 1970s, war, 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 war. War out there. We had people. We had peace-loving people, anti-war people that were bombing their own government, bombing their own community, and then they all went into biotech and the behavioral sciences and all the points in between, and then they turned the war inside and caused violence and casualties inside people's bodies, and then turned, and then now you see what goes on in the hospital system, the casualties of war that was turned from outside and inside is now in palliative care, they're under oncology, they're taking their string of prescription drugs, alcohol, drugs, rampant sex, and people are reliving the 1960s over and over and over and over again. You have the hippie, the hippie chicks, what is it, the, the hippie chicks, the crunchy mamas are giving their kids antibiotics, just lobbing grenades inside their body. Oh, and then you have Robert Palmer. <laughs> Addicted to love. The lights are on, but you're not home. Your mind is not your own. Your heart sweats. Your body shakes. Another kiss is what it takes. You can't sleep. You can't eat. There's no doubt. You're in deep. The throat is tight. You're in deep. Oh, yeah. You can't breathe. Another kiss is all you need. Yeah. Another kiss from your parent or from your husband or wife. Another kiss is all you need. Whoa, you like to think that you're immune to this stuff, but oh yeah, it's closer to the truth to say you can't get enough. You know you're going to have to face it. You're addicted to love. <laughs> all right, so you see the signs, but you can't read. You see the signs, but you can't read. You're running at a different speed. Your heart beats in double time. Another kiss, and you'll be mine. A one-track mind, you can't be saved. Oblivion is all you crave, and that's what's going on. People are just craving oblivion. Drugged out, alcoholed out, inebriated, sexed out. They're surrounded by their grandbabies all the time, <laughs> or somebody else's children. Um, 
So one track mind, you can't be saved. <laughs> Oblivion is all you crave. Is there some left for you? You don't mind if you do. Well, you like to think that you're immune to all the stuff, but oh yeah, it's closer to the truth. You, so you can't get enough. You're going to have to face it. You're addicted to love. And then the whole loop, loop, loop. Okay. And that's like, holy crap. And that is, that's exactly what's going on right now. And so then, um, and then the whole, let me see. I'll tell you the type of uh, hippies. Hippies. Uh, my God, I have so much stuff. Yeah, when my mind's going, oh yeah. There we go. I'll read this. So, I mean, I played the game when I was 20 and 30. I went to Annapurna in Berkeley on Telegraph Street. So, yeah, when I was in California, San Francisco, Berkeley, all just a revisitation of the 1960s and 70s. I was in it. I was in the war. I was in the starting of the war, the porn industry, all that stuff. Oh, Lordy. No wonder I had a war inside. Um... Annapurna in Berkeley on Telegraph Street wore the patchouli oil. Oh, my husband loves patchouli oil, by the way. I had a string of flings and boyfriends, but not too many and not too little. Everything was about love, lust, drinking, smoking pot, studying. I wasn't playing music, but I was listening to music and chasing pleasure. That's exactly what the beatnik generation instilled in themselves and other people. And when you're chasing pleasure, violence and war and other things happen and depression and anxiety. And then one day, disease. And then spending the rest of your life playing whack-a-mole with your beast because of all the defenses are built up from the antibiotics and the trauma programming from all the chasing pleasure and all the drugs and all the, the crazy shit that happens. And so in the JJ world, those days are over. It's time to get your life back from the beast. But we don't turn into young urban professionals exploiting our children. Because you could see the 1960s and 70s love piece turned into programming the violence and chasing wealth. And then no wonder the Gen X, Y is angry dealing with multitude of diseases. And remember, we're also in the green machine. This is the great reset, okay? It's not a bad thing if you understand it, but you have to know how to survive it. So crunchy mamas, the hippie chicks, they deal with the oils and antibiotics, and they're the ones that are lobbing grenades in their children's bodies as well as their bodies and everyone else's. And so the monster, the beast, is getting stronger inside the person, and it will destroy them internally, if not externally. And so what kind of the different hippies out there, which really made sense to me, the musical hippies, the activist hippies, the intellectual hippies, yeah, they're high level in academia, the uh, Rastafarian hippies, the artistic hippies, the corporate hippies, and any other hippie that you can think of. And that, that is running our society because we are, we live in the 1960s. We have so many people going back in time and, and they, and, and they're, dealing with disease. They are dealing with disease and living in the past. And so, uh, yeah, it, so it's pretty crazy. And so, yeah, I'm dealing with my own demons and you see when I'm really harsh, you see what I had to deal with. Okay. I mean, part of me is very harsh, very sarcastic. That's what I had to deal with. So anytime you hear me, you hear the mean, sarcastic, just, like full of herself, maybe come off narcissistic, narcissistic, like this, this, let me see, hold on, I'll show you an example. So this is about Joe Biden stuff. So I'm a little inflammatory because I have a relationship with my student loans for many years. Consider the eighties and the nineties and the two thousands, them dipping into the resources pool and encouraging everybody into college to see what kind of influence and contribution to the workforce and innovation plus research fishing for the best minds. Okay. Uh, with the amount of redundancy we have on the planet, we don't need to saddle people and destroy our economy with debt. And so you read, you, well, I'll, I'll read it. So biotechnology figured out how to groom people, and now they're giving you all the information to groom yourself if you have what it takes to innovate yourself. <clears throat> and if you can't handle the viruses or your own predisposed issues, it's a moot point. You're not going to be affected by the change in the world because you won't be around. And this is around the student loan stuff, right? So the federal government will pay off whatever they need to to make it easier for everyone, even if you don't see it that way. 
Remember, they can always print money, and they do. We've bailed out banks and airlines and other corporations. Money is a perspective. If you have the power to print money, great. Or make it, more power to you. If you don't have the power to print money, then you need to make it, honestly, with innovation. And so, this is where I get sarcastic. This is where, this is where my mom comes out of me, okay? <laughs> so you understand. Because I, I remember, I'm a product of my environment. I'm sorry you never chose to go to college. If you paid off your college loans, here, let me give you a cookie, <laughs> okay? If daddy paid for your college, well, I'm laughing, right? If you worked and went to school at the same time, wow, what kind of Adderall and crack did you use and how many years did it take you to get your bachelor's? The sarcasm, you see, you hear the sarcasm in me, okay? You hear the evil sarcasm in me. <laughs> Working 40 hours a week and going to school full time, eight, you know, nights and weekends. I can't imagine you can live off of 20 hours a week and going to school part time. And do you have an autoimmune disorder now because you had that much energy when you were a child? So think about Shanann Watts and Chris Watts. She did a lot of things when she was younger before she got diagnosed with a condition. She had a lot of energy and she built her own house, did a bunch of stuff. So she was a self-made woman when you think about it and also worked so many hours with her Thrive um, MLM company, a home-based company, and raising her kids and, you know, running her husband. And then her husband couldn't take her, situ her couldn't take her situation and her, so he killed her and, and he fell in love with somebody else. And so when people have that much energy and they're like, oh, you should go to school and go to work and all this other stuff, <clears throat> how can you really get through and stay and pay attention if you have health issues and then you're trying to go to work full time and go to school full time. It's one or the other. You go to either work full time or you go to school full time. But you don't do both because it is, unless you're on some kind of drugs or you have a crazy hormone situation where you can like stay up for two days and only sleep for four hours. And I know, I know people who do do that, who, who hormonally they are up for two days and only sleep for four hours. And that's how their life is. Dude, if they, you know, if, if they went to school they could get many degrees because they would have the time to study. They had that much energy. Not at the time, they had that much energy. Okay, so and so and so if if you need to get college loans so you can go to school full time and put all your energy in that, then do it. So anything else? Anything else you want to gripe about here? Here's the suggestion box. I'll be sure to give it to the management. And so you're hearing a lot of sarcasm in me, okay? So while you are while you're all bitching and complaining about, maybe open up a textbook or two. That's my mother there. Read a different website instead of listening to these inflammatory pundits, blowhards who have nothing better to do. Student loans have been predatory and exploitative for many years. If you support exploitation of children, well, yikes. Okay, now that's blaming you all. I mean, if you're going to compare student loans with your car loan or your mortgage, well, <laughs> You're comparing apples and oranges. When someone gets a car loan or a mortgage, they either have a co-signer or they're old enough to make those decisions later on in life when they had life experience after they had college or a trade school. And so do you really expect a 19, 20, or 30-year-old, and I was 30 when I took out the student loans, with their, actually, yeah, I was in my 20s. No, because I went to JFK University, I took a student loan out. But I actually paid off a few student loans. It was only $3,000, and I paid that one off at some point. But I took on more in my 30s. But when you get when you get a car loan or a mortgage, they either have a co-signer. Okay, I got that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. When someone gets a car loan or a mortgage loan, they either have a co-signer or they're old enough to make those decisions later on in life when they've had all life experience after they had college or trade school. So, do you really expect a 19, 20, or 30 year old with their whole life ahead of them make sound financial decisions? Age is not reflective of maturity or wisdom. Oh hell no, I wasn't mature. I didn't have enough wisdom back when I was 30. Oh, hell no. I, I had a stunted growth. I was a late bloomer. Some, some, few, some employer that I was interviewing for when I was trying to do something and I couldn't pull off the interview, he's like, you're a late bloomer, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, I am a late bloomer. He's like, okay, because someone your age, you should be further ahead than where you are because, yeah, I was 30 and looking to be an admin for something and is trying to get a job someplace that I'm like, you can do so much. You're, you're 30 something years old. What are you doing at trying to get this tiny little job? I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so saddling students with a debt, is like charging your kids for every meal you fed him every day, asking 
when for, every, every day since day one asking that kid to pay back all the money you invested in him or her okay and so kids got to eat don't punish him or her for trying to eat and make something better for themselves and it's indentured servitude the poor kids are being sold a dream and then come out into the world but already at a negative so indentured servitude is a form of labor in which a person is contracted to work without salary for a specific number of years and so when you're taking on student loans and you're expected to pay them back a certain amount of time after graduation and then you go to a, and you go to a college or not a college a, a new workforce then those student loans have to be paid back and it's a percentage and sometimes it's like, it's like five or six hundred dollars and you're getting paid like you know not very well in an entry-level job and now you have to pay student loans back which is like half your income that's indentured servitude that's what these student loans are. They're predatory as hell. And then we have people in, you know, in the right wing and maybe in the left wing. They're all like, yeah, pay back the fucking loans. Pay, you know, pay your bills. And nothing is black and white. We've been exploited ever since shit, ever since Imhotep, okay? And so I don't think that we need to punish kids for eating food, making them pay back everything mommy and daddy invested them. I don't think we should punish kids for getting an education if they have the desire to and they, they either get something out of their education and contribute to the world or they get a degree, whatever. I think that it all should be fucking for free because it's, it's economies change. And so bettering yourself is right there you're taking something of yourself you're taking your energy your resources to learn something so you can better the world why do you have to pay twice you know you know how many hours i put into this am i getting paid for this no i'm not but this is better this is for me this is for me and and you guys are getting the benefit of it will i get any kind of re you know conversation later yeah i'm sure do I expect it? No, but that's the thing is that if you're going to, if you're going to contribute to society, well, that's the thing is that they're going to charge you loans because there's no guarantee that you're, well, unless you die, you know, you're going to contribute to society, whether it's working at retail, you know, with student loans or a degree, or you're working in a huge corporation, you're still contributing to a society. So whatever. So, I mean, if you're going to contribute to society, you might as well get any kind of education you can. Because no matter what, any kind of information is going to help society regardless. Why are we exploiting children? Why are we charging people for fucking education? I'm sorry, some people never went to fucking college. They don't understand. Let me tell you, when I, went, when I, was, when I was in college, I went full-time, got the student loans, and, and I learned about the world that I lived in. And my mom was like, well, you should take student loans. You should work part-time and go to school part-time or full-time. Let me tell you, I tried doing that and I couldn't. Well, I had the PMDD, first of all. But if someone had a different health situation, they probably could do it. But it's not for everybody. You can't, not everybody can do that. My fucking body wouldn't let me do that. And so, and so you know, when, when my boyfriend and I broke up and I was going to school, I dropped out of school. I was trying to go to this job full-time. And even then, my PMD was just horrible. God. So, so I just said, okay, I'm just going to go to Hawaii. <laughs> and just go hang out on the beach and go party and just be stupid. And hang out with a bunch of Jesus cult people. <laughs> oh, jeez. But, and so, yeah, part of me gets really sarcastic. Sarcastic. And I can be, I mean, when Jana Horst, bless her heart. I mean, she asked a question about, well, what is shadow work? And I was in the mode yesterday. I'm like, I don't understand the question. <laughs> Why don't you Google it? And I really want you guys, if you don't know something, Google it. I know I could be sarcastic and be kind of bitchy when someone asks a question. Because I'm just like, you know, I really don't want to answer all these questions. And I don't want to Google them. If I can go and Google and screenshot something, I will. If I don't know something... I mean, John, you put stuff out there that I didn't know, and I'm not asking you, hey, John, what's that? No, I'm going to go and figure out what it is and screenshot it and put it as a, as, you know, as a comment. And if it was right, great. He'd be like, yeah, if it was wrong, then he could put whatever he wanted. Okay? And that shows that I have initiative to go and figure out what he's trying to say. 
and contribute something to the conversation and not keep taking from it. And so when I, when I get irritated, I, I come off like, you know, whatever. And that, that is the mom in me. But I, there's a different way you can do that. There's definitely a different way you can respond. Absolutely. I could say just Google it and just leave it at that. But when I said I don't understand the question, that was sarcastic. That was in mean spirit. And so I apologize to you <laughs> for that. But, you know, I mean, I want you guys to start doing your own research. I want you guys to really take your education in your own hands. That it's not always left to somebody else to tell you, spoon feed you. Okay? And that's really the premise of where I'm going. And that's why... That's why I do this for myself because I'm learning about world history, Western civilization, shit, just the history of, of just within the last, you know, 50 years, literally 50 years. Okay. And it's amazing when you connect them all together and you connect, you know, biotech and, and biology and physics and chemistry, and then you get such an amazing point of view in a world, a different vantage point that then who knows what, who knows what you could do with that where it could take you, what kind of inventions that you could, and then if you want to do an inventions or you want to get credibility, you write a book or, you know, you get a little bit more um, credentials under you and then you're building some amazing things, whatever it is, building a business, building buildings, building a thought process and the sky is the fucking limit. That's what I'm saying. And so you really have to take, you know, your own education in your hands and not allow somebody else to propagandize you. Because when you ask somebody a question, now you're allowing someone to propagandize you. <laughs> Instead of you looking up every type of answer for it. And shadow work, when someone asks about shadow work, it could have been, yeah, you know, what I posted there. And it's a, there's a psychological point of view. And there's other points of view about shadow work. So when you're getting one answer to uh, a question about one specific thing, then you're, you're getting a filtered perspective. Okay. And so then you got to do the research to get all the perspectives and then make your own decision on that. But when you ask a question, you either get lied to or you'll get a propaganda. You'll get just one point of view. And if that's okay with you and, and you just buy one point of view, then you're not taking education. You're not taking part in your own education. You just want to be spoon fed. And that's irritating to me because after all that I've been talking about the last couple of years and that's still your mentality, I do come off irritated. Okay. So anyways, that's all I'm going to say. It's a lot, but now you see the correlation between the war inside and the war out there and all the different terrorist bombings that were happening domestically is the antibiotics. Antibiotics is domestic terrorism because you're destroying yourself from the inside. Surgery is domestic terrorism. And so now you see why we are in such a pickle and why the New World Order is now cleaning up the Petri dish because we've got a lot of crazy people out there and you have to protect yourself. All right, bye.